Hello, and welcome to this overview lecture on our learning unit on normative definitions of human rights. This week we changed gears, turning our attention toward the origins, early documents, and institutional framework through which moral human rights became legal human rights. The post-World War II institutions provide the backdrop and grounding for our study of CEDAW, the Convention for the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, and the Rights of Women. Many may view human rights loosely as rooted in specific religious traditions or theological definitions of what it means to be human. Note the language in the U.S. Declaration of Independence. Religious texts and traditions may indeed ground individuals and leaders in deeper understandings of what it means to be a human being, the natural rights of people, and their struggles for self-realization, for social justice, and for our mutual obligations one toward another. However, some religious beliefs and leaders, in some instances, have and continue to pose restrictions on the legitimate rights of specific groups of people. Others are outsiders, just as some secular institutions have violated, violated our shared sense of ethical. Michael J. Perry, in Human Rights in the Constitutional Law of the United States, grounds human rights as legal rights specifically and the global political morality that emerged after the Second World War. This global morality and the institutions it fostered emerged in response to atrocities from the 20th century outlined by Perry in the first couple of pages, including the atrocity of Auschwitz, presented in the video you saw in the Unit 1 orientation. Other examples of these atrocities include the Ottoman Turks, the Soviet Union's Joseph Stalin, China's Mao Zedong, of course, Germany's Adolf Hitler, and then Cambodia, Bosnia, Rwanda, Darfur and Sudan. Perry's book provides a high, highly informative overview of human rights, international conventions, and the United States Constitution at a crucial moment in our history. The Perry chapters are here integrated with online links to the Universal De Declaration of Rights and the United States Constitution. According to Perry, a key factor in determining whether a nation upholds international laws on human rights is whether the constitution of that nation upholds or challenges them, a topic we will take up at great length in subsequent weeks in the semester. Perry provides a penetrating analysis of especially three main human rights and international law, which are entrenched in the constitutional law of the United States and are therefore part of the constitutional morality of the United States. The right not to be subjected to cruel and unusual punishment, the right to moral equality, and the right to religious and moral freedom. Michael Perry's book is divided into two major parts. Part one, the morality of human rights has chapters called The Internationalization of Human Rights, What is a Human Right versus What is a Legal Right, and The Normative Grounds of Human Rights. Important notes within those chapters, especially The Internationalization of Human Rights, include a description of the, 18, the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights and then additional treaties uh, added uh, by the United Nations later in the century. 
a key question is what is a human right versus what is a legal right? A legal right is essential to its enforceability and then the normative grounds of human rights, that is, the inherent dignity and inviolable nature of human beings. Part two includes five chapters on the constitutional morality of the United States, including chapters on capital punishment, the right to moral equality, the right to religious and moral freedom, same-sex marriage, and abortion. Surprisingly, or perhaps not surprisingly, as we move deeper into the topic of the Convention for the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, Sira is mute on abortion. Alongside the readings over the next few weeks, you will be asked to take a panoramic view of human rights conventions, covenants, and protocols, which emerged after World War II. These are available on the United Nations website, which can be found in websites, but also in the weekly folders. UN and UNICEF videos, by contrast to the discursive text, are up close and personal. They appeal to the emotions, using images of poverty, children, and women to tug at our hearts. This is very much the case for uh, the video on Rwanda in our folder for this week. This is not a course in morality, but rather in sociology and sociological analysis. You will need to exercise discipline and reserve as we examine the laws surrounding these issues in the United States, thinking about empirical studies rather than opinions, why and how some nations align with the values of United Nations conventions, especially CEDAW. We will look particularly at the social context through which CEDAW is interpreted, the different cultural and religious values, and use these to examine and analyze why some nations are and others are not fully parties to the Convention for the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women.